and we are back on the back story. Joining us now, straight out of Moscow, Russia, the great journalist, Sonia Van Den End. Hey, Sonia, how are you doing? Hi, Ali. Fine, thanks. Hope you're well, too. So, a kind of, kind of busy weekend. So, first off, you're in Moscow. How is it with Xi Jinping, the Chinese leader in, in Moscow today? How is the city different? Uh, well, it's, it's a big event, of course, because it's uh, the first time after he was elected on the 10th of March, Xi Jinping. He's on his first visit, and that's Russia. And I didn't see it, but what I've heard, there was a whole colon of cars coming with him from the airport, all media, of course, his staff, everything. So it's a spectacle, I think, what was on the way. So I didn't see it myself, but I could see it everywhere, you know, on the news and yeah, lots of cars and cars and people. So, and of course he is now so, uh, at the Kremlin. So I'm curious, did they do anything to spruce up the city? Yeah, you know, are the banners or, or stuff like that walking me in? No, 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 it's 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 okay. It's, uh, you know, I think it was, he was on the highway somewhere. There was a little of uh, chaos, but it went okay. It's always a chaos here on the highway, so <laughs> that's not d different. But it went all smoothly and it's okay. He's now in the Kremlin and I think he spoke for four hours to President Putin. So that's quite a long time, I think. Yes, and they're there for days. And he's got a big, he, as you mentioned, he does have a big team of people with him. And this is a major trip, and the West is kind of freaked out about it. The West is saying, but we don't, it's not true. The West is saying Xi's over there to talk Putin into peace on Ukraine. Now, I would say the proper take, the truth, is that both Putin and Xi would like peace in Ukraine, but do not see the peace on the West terms as peace, you know, I think Putin would like nothing better than peace, but he'd like the Russians not being provoked all the time by the West. What do you think, Sonia? Yes, of course. That's what, uh, you know, remember last year in April, then there were peace talks and it was nearly there, but the West uh, pulled out like Ukraine did. So, of course, they want peace, but then the West started with all their crazy sanctions, with all their Russophobia, what is going on in the West. So. And I think Xi Jinping wants the same, but now, of course, it's uh, a trick. Now the West, you know, they have put uh, in a restaurant for President Putin, but they did it just before uh, Xi Jinping came to Moscow. So, well, that says something, of course, that the West, they don't want peace, not at all. They want war. And that was the International Criminal Court was in, is in The Hague in the Netherlands, but that does not have any effect, does it, Sonia? No, because, you know, it, it, it's it's yeah, it's ridiculous, actually, because the US is not a member of the ICC. Russia is not a member. China is not a member. Israel, of course, also is not a member. So it's just a gesture, just saying, OK, you know, we, we put in a restaurant for him. That, that's all. They're, they're, he will not be convicted or something, you know, it's uh, no. It's crazy. Yeah, and it's yeah, all in my country. It's, yeah. it's, well, let's talk about the Netherlands for a quick second. We'll come back to Putin because I saw him driving around Mariupol and want to talk to you about that. But before we do that, let's talk about the recent Dutch elections. I understand the BBB, the Dutch Farmers Party, a new party that did not exist like four years ago, had a big victory. Is that right, Sonia? Yes, that's right. And they were uh, uh, invented, you can speak about that, in 2019 uh, by a P PR uh, bureau and uh, a journalist who worked for the agriculture sector somehow. And uh, there was no farmer involved, actually. So I think my, my opinion is that it's a PR stunt because, you know, everybody in the Netherlands is not satisfied with the current Dutch government. So they had to do something and this is what they did. And then now the biggest party in the Netherlands. But actually there are rumors saying that they are 
in that, so to speak, with Bayer Monsanto. <laughs> so that's not a good thing, of course. And also, uh, they will comply with the nitrogen rules. That's what they said already. They said, no, the date 2030, okay, we can talk about the date, but for sure they will apply and sorry, they will comply. So, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's didn't bring anything well, I, good. I think it shows that people are, are hungry for a new party, are, are hungry for choices, right? And that I, I don't, I, I'm not, you know, I don't know about this party. This party might not be it, but I think it shows that people want something new. Do you agree? Yes, they want something new. I think not only in the Netherlands, but the whole of Europe. It's in turmoil. You know, everywhere there are demonstrations against war, pension reforms, uh, farmers in the Netherlands. So the, the whole of Europe is in upheaval. So they are afraid, you know, the elites are afraid. And that's why new parties are coming and telling them, oh, you know, everything will be all right when you vote for us. But yeah, it's it's a mess. It's a big mess in Europe and was to be expected, of course, after they put sanctions after uh, they don't have gas anymore themselves. So it was to be expected. Now, you, you say they don't like the West and the new, you know, the new world order, let's call it that. Mm -hmm. And before he went to Russia, Xi Jinping released a statement and Putin released a statement too. And their statements were released to the newspapers locally made very clear statements against the New World Order, right? They've been very clear what they're against and they're in favor of a multipolar world, right? Yes, that's right. And uh, I uh, translated uh, President Putin his statement today in uh, Dutch, so they, they can read it in the Netherlands and it's in English, of course, already. And in his statement, it's clear that uh, they both favor, he, for at least here in Russia, favor the multipolar world. And also to blame, not yeah, to blame the West that they don't want peace and they struggling with this multipolar world. It's that's what they do. And my guess, but okay, I'm I'm not of course in government of the Netherlands or whatever. But I think they have a big problem with Russia because of that, and now with China, because as we know, you know, the US is also wanting a war with China. So I think they're still a little bit too, I don't know, afraid. But uh, yeah. I've, Maybe they don't dare to do it now. I, I don't know, but this is this is their aim. They want to keep on their power in the uni, uh, polar world and their colonial past. So th this is what uh, it's all about, I think. And part of what's going on here is a battle against the U.S. deep state, uh, against the worldwide deep state. Let me talk about that. The worldwide deep state the British intelligence, and we've seen in, in Australia even, and we'll talk about that in a sec, but we've seen major arms deals in Australia to get Cold War going against China. So let's talk about the CIA. Uh, here's a good clip I found, Sonia. This is the author of a book that I like a lot called CIA as Organized Crime. And see if you see him saying anything wrong here at all. He's going over the history of the Ukraine and why the US is backing the Ukraine. And he points out the thing I pointed out many times on this show, that this is an 80 year history of the US CIA, the deep state supporting Ukraine Nazis. So let's play that clip, hit it. Precious assets in the Ukraine for 70 years. And every year since 1948, when the CIA was went into operation, it has a, had a station in the Ukraine with a CIA officer who's running operations. And those operations have all been directed against first the Soviet Union and after the collapse of the Soviet Union against Russia. There's a lot of momentum that has built up over 75 years vast agent nets have been put in place. Sleeper agents have been in place for decades and they're all working against Russia, which is why nowadays it's so hard for the mainstream media and the government to shift and, 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 and even consider for a moment having good relations 
with with Russia, uh, NATO, the whole its whole mandate and its whole ex reason for its existence has been to uh, threaten and roll back Russia and eventually sabotage and subversion subvert it and put it out of business. And Ukraine, the CIA's operations in the Ukraine are the cutting edge vanguard of this effort. So if you look at recent events in Ukraine, you have to see them in that context, how for decades the CIA has been trying to recruit Ukrainian politicians, Ukrainian businessmen who are sympathetic and compatible with Western American ideas and values and, and interests of being of fighting against the Russians and recruiting them and putting them in place and um, uh, setting them up with bank accounts, giving them paramilitary training, everything the CIA does across the board, the Ukraine has been the vanguard of this operation against Russia. The details are in my book, the CIA's organized crime, how this works at the very, at the at the agent level, how it how the CIA would go around and work with uh, after the coup that threw out a pro-Russian government and installed a pro-American anti-Russian government, how the CIA already had, had. So is that history the way you know it, Sonia? What do you of think course. of that? Yeah, of course, it's uh, it's like that. I mean, uh, they did it before with Afghanistan, they did it in Iraq, they did it in Syria. I'm just recently uh, looking at, uh, it's only a TV series, it's Homeland, they probably you know it, but I think there's a lot of truth in there, how they operate, how they work, and it's the same of course with his book. And yeah, it, it, my recent, what I remember, I wrote an article was about Belarus. It was, uh, I think, two years ago that they wanted, you know, they had also their uh, demonstrations against the government. And it was also orchestrated by the CIA, of course, in cooperation with Western countries like the Netherlands again. Unfortunately, the Netherlands, it's what I made the statement already before that the Netherlands is involved in everything what is inspiring MI5, MI6, uh, Bellingcat, the whole lot. <laughs> and they tried, it in, they tried it in Belarus as well. But of course, in Ukraine, they are already doing for years and years to try to destabilize and actually waging a proxy war uh, against Russia. And it's now in the open and now they want a real war. That's what I think. No, I agree, Sonia. And let me say one other country that the CIA has done this with, a country you may have heard of called the United States. Is it obvious to you that the CIA overthrew the election here in 2020? Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. It was I with Trump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trump, <laughs> of course, with Trump. And now right. Trump is saying loudly that he will be arrested. If that's true, of course, we don't know. But... Yes, of course, they, 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 they do it in the in the US as well. It's, I think they try the, <laughs> the whole world, they try it, but you have an internal struggle there in uh, the US. That's what I think. Now, so a, a guy who's featured here, he's on HBO, the, the movie service this month, is Navalny. So when you walk around Moscow, do you see a lot of Navalny t-shirts, you, you know, pins? People, big fans of Navalny there in Moscow, from what you see, Sonia? No, 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 no. Actually, this is really forbidden here. I mean, uh, it's 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 a crazy guy. Guy, we know that he is used by CIA, by Western powers, and uh, he's now in jail. We all know that. Somehow, I don't know where he is, but doesn't matter. But you will not see any supporters of him. I, I tell you, even before this was all out in the open, you know, in uh, in Germany where he was sick and he was treated, uh, he was not a big guy here in Russia because he was jailed, but not because he was an opposition member. He was jailed, be jailed because he uh, had put fraud in uh, against, it was Yves Rocher. This was this Cosmetica branch from France. So this is what he, I don't know, he, he did something with that most likely with money and somehow corruption and so he was not a big guy here. he had not a lot of support so he was maybe i don't know how many percent but he was not big so i think a lot of people didn't even hear from him it's in the in the west you know outside russia they hear from him but here not many now they do but that time no so he's basically 
a put up sort of fake candidate, almost like Zelensky. You know, Zelensky was a guy who was plucked from Netflix and Kolomoisky, who backed Zelensky. He's done in some trouble now in Ukraine. Is that correct? Do you think that backing the establishment has bit Kolomoisky in the butt? Mm -hmm. Sonia? Yes, sure. I, I know Zelensky was an actor, you know that too. He was in that somehow it was a series about how corrupt po politicians are in the Ukraine. And I think the play was just like at, as he became now. And this is what the US is doing. But I think the, the, the candidates they have, they, they have become really bad at the moment. If you look at Zelensky, I mean, I think the majority now in the West or the US know that he's fake and he's just a puppet. puppet. And now they're trying Navalny. But yeah, it's also, it's nothing. It's not a real leader or something. So it's getting worse with their uh, puppets, I think. And yeah, if, if I think many people now know that's what I can see that Zelensky is fake. They know it with his T-shirt, you know, his own brand's T-shirt. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you who I think is real. This guy Vladimir Putin. Have you heard of him? Uh, yeah, Putin? I think I heard. I think I heard of him. I'm not sure, but <laughs> yeah. <Once or twice. laughs> yeah he was in Mariupol this weekend, and he was driving around. And I'll say this. Putin likes driving because mm -hmm. I've seen him drive across the Kerch Bridge. Remember, he drove the truck across that, Sonia? Yeah, yeah, sure. He likes driving. And of course, this is also, I think, uh, somehow a statement because they were saying, oh, you know, Putin is ill, he's sick, he's using stand ins, doubles, and I don't know what they all say. But he's went to Mariupol. First, he went to Crimea and he spoke there. And uh, I think he visited an art school for children. After that, he went to Mariupol. I was there too. It is a whole new area where they built all new uh, apartments. So it's, it was very nice. I was there last summer in and July. He, in Mariupol, I said he went to a archaeological park. Mm -hmm. There's a park that they're doing digging, archaeological digging. Is that right, Sonia? Yeah, I don't know if it was in Mariupol. I think it was in Crimea that he went there. And Mariupol, he okay. went to all the apartment buildings. There are a lot of them now. And they're really nice. And he went uh, somehow inside unexpectedly. And it was, yeah, a lady was really, oh, wow, you know, <laughs> President Putin is coming to visit. And But he, he was there and there was a man with him and showing him all the building sites, maps and so that, that that was really good. And of course, in the mainstream media, they tried to say now that, oh, there was a woman behind there shouting that it was all fake. Now that's, that, that's fake. Right. And uh, let me say this. Putin also looks like he knows how to drive. He's very casual about it. Does that make sense? He's, you know, he's good at it. He's good at driving and he's not nervous. We had presidents here in the U.S. George H.W. Bush didn't know how the checkout at the grocery store worked. So we have politicians who don't know how to do anything here. Biden rides a bike and he falls over. So Putin didn't fall over. No. Right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Makes him look like a regular person. No, and he didn't make any accident or something. So, no, I mean, he's, uh, I think, uh, he's down to earth uh, president. I mean, if you see uh, the ones in uh, the US, I mean, of course, Biden, it's uh, very old. I think a lot of people are speculating about his mental state. <laughs> but um, yeah, Putin is okay, okay. He's a I little think, bit. I think Putin fools people because he's in his 70s, right? But yeah. because he, appears young. He appears very vital and very young. He, he's a guy who learned to play hockey when he was 60 years old. Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm almost four years from 60, mm -hmm. uh, three actually, three years from 60. And believe me, I'm not learning hockey, Sonia, trust me. I'm not <laughs> doing that, especially against the Russian Olympic team. But Putin's a guy who learned to play hockey at 60. So he's very physically vital. Is that right, Sonia? Yeah, that's right. And uh, I think some people are like that when they're older and some people are not. That's, but he is one of the guys who is like that. And what I heard, he doesn't smoke, doesn't drink. So maybe that is helping as well. But yes, he is. And um, yeah, okay. He's still, 
if you see other people who are 70, well, yeah, they look quite different. So yeah, and he drives his car. He likes to drive his own car. So uh, that's good. Yeah, no, I, I thought it was very good. And, and the kind of thing we have here, President Biden, who won't even go to some place like East Palestine, Ohio, where we had a train derailment. He won't even show up. They, they so dislike the people that when Donald Trump showed up and bought people big mats, it was headlines because a politician had shown up in the city. So I think politicians showing up and like you say, you know, what the West would have you believe is that he would show up in Mariupol and he'd be yelled at and hated. But instead, he's respected and loved, right? That, is that what you saw in Mariupol? Yeah, that's right. And uh, you can see that from the people, they really respect him and they really, uh, especially in the new territories like uh, the Donbass now, Mariupol, and but also in Russia itself, they, uh, yeah, I think they think here it's a great leader. And I think so too, because when you compare him to Western leaders, they are, a lot of them are fake. This is what I, I think, like, like Biden, he's, I see 80 or something. And to my opinion, a little bit too old to be a president, but when he was, would be fit, okay, then it's not a problem, but he's not. And a lot of uh, Western also, leaders are not. Also, Sonia, also mm -hmm. in the car, Putin had no documents they brought there. He had no documents that were classified that he brought with him. <laughs> That's what Biden did. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think <laughs> he didn't. He had the documents how the apartments were built. There was a guy sitting next to him. So <laughs> no, he, uh, he I think I didn't think he had secret documents, you know. <laughs> it's crazy stuff in and the US. I think, I think you follow that up with the G vision, you know, that's a major visit and it shows the West is trying to say Putin's isolated. Only if isolated means you have the most populous country in the world on your side, right? You know, yeah. it's like I'm isolated because only busful people came to my party. It's a big country. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a big is country. That right, yeah, that's right. It's a very big country. And of course, now the leader of China is here and China is also a big country. So two big countries collaborating against the West. Imagine this, you know, I mean, it's yeah, it's it's the West is it's crazy. And also I wanted to mention about Mariupol, you know, the, the sirens didn't go off, by the way, when he was visiting uh, Mariupol. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the West, when leaders visit Kiev, the, the alarm uh, is going off all the time. The air raid sirens are going off. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, they, the West thinks uh, Russia is isolated now, but it is not isolated. The West is isolated because Europe is not big when you see it as a whole. And the US is a failing empire at the moment. They, I mean, I, I see sometimes you only you the only one can confirm it to me, but I see sometimes pictures or videos from cities and I think, oh my God, this is really bad. You know, a lot of people hooked on drugs or uh, slums or uh, I don't know if it's true, but this is what I can the, see here. The, the, the homeless population, no, in some parts of the country, I'm in South Dakota, so mm -hmm. it's too cold here for homelessness mm -hmm. because it was like eight degrees a couple of days ago. It's very cold here. So you can't have homeless people here. But in California, where it was nice, rainy lately, but still nice, the homeless situation is off the hook crazy. It's real. And my brother lives out in Southern California. It's real, Sonia. That's mm -hmm. not an illusion. Okay. And no one, yes, it's absolutely true. Well, that's very sad, actually, and I can confirm it from the Netherlands or even I, I lived in Germany before I came to uh, to Russia. And this is also very bad when you go to cities like Berlin. It, it's it's terrible, you know, it's because, of course, Europe has so many refugees and a lot of them are illegal and they don't have houses or something. And you look in the streets and you think, first of all, you are not in Germany anymore. But OK, that's another thing. But so many are homeless, poor. It, it, it's uh, drugs. A lot of drugs are going on. Cocaine, heroin. It's it's really bad. It's that's it's why I'm. Well, I Yes, and I ahead. started to go to Amsterdam about 30 years ago, and I stopped probably 
20 years ago. I haven't been to Amsterdam in a couple of decades. But when I first w went 30 years ago, till the last time I went, two decades ago, I noticed people on heroin in the park. You know, I originally went like a lot of tourists because I like weed. So I, I, I like the marijuana in Amsterdam, but the heroin, not so much. And I started to see it more and more. Did you see that, Sonia, in the Netherlands, where you're mm -hmm. seeing heroin more and more? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, yes. Uh, I was there the last time in Amsterdam in 2019. They sell it on the streets, and there were even signs that uh, they were, were selling uh, illegal heroin and maybe contaminated with something. So that's really bad. And a lot of cocaine is coming in, in the harbor, you know, Rotterdam, the port. I always call now the Netherlands uh, the narco state of of Europe. They are there are so many drugs. It's it's really frightening. I'm very happy I'm not living there anymore because of this problem only. You know, it, it's it's worse when you even there were rumors that at uh, the parliament outside the parliament building they were uh, dealing in cocaine because there are rumors that some ministers or secretaries of state are on cocaine maybe that is that's why they do such weird things i don't know but it's really bad it's a big big problem it's uh it, it's well you know there's trouble look out look out at the central station if zelensky's hanging around there should be cocaine sonia so watch out for him my name i will i will uh i will call a few people there and tell it <laughs> yes right. right tell me he's a guy in a sweatshirt he's a guy dressed badly Mm -hmm. They'll spot him because he dresses very badly. Yeah, maybe, so, maybe you know, Nazi symbols on him. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. you're right. Uh -huh. But so. uh, it's, I agree with what you were saying before. I think Europe is seeing the size of the protests. You saw the protests in Paris over the weekend, right? Right, yes. And... Uh, I mean, we laugh about this, but actually it's really sad what is going on. You know, Europe has a very rich culture. Uh, we have a lot of uh, writers, poets, uh, you name it. And we had it in Europe. It's still there, but we have this crazy uh, cancel culture, this woke ideology. And now, of course, uh, the, it's very deteriorating in France. We can see that because the pension, the age for the pension is going down to, it's going up, sorry, to 64, I think. So all these things are happening people yeah the wealth they had once is disappearing and it's disappearing fast that's what i know because i've also heard that a lot of people are going to this yeah certain uh, shops food shops food stamps i can call it uh, what they have maybe in the us so it's gone up i think 80 percent in the netherlands and netherlands is a very rich country so it's it's so sad to see all this and you know it's in Germany it's in the Netherlands it's in Austria I think even it, it's really sad and I and, think it's going quickly now. This is happening under the leadership of the U.S. leading the New World Order, the U.S. and the Brits leading the New World Order. All this decline is happening under that leadership, and so I think that people of the U.S. would actually be better off in the multipolar world. I think the people of Europe would be better off in a multipolar world, the kind of world Russia and China want. They don't want a world where they dictate to everyone, you got to do things the way China does. But they've said very clearly, look, not every government needs to be run the same way, right? Yeah, Is that what they said, Sonia? Of course, yeah. Every country should keep its sovereignty. And you can have like a European Union, it's a block, but they rule everything, everything for the citizens. You know, you cannot give the same rule for people in the Netherlands and people in Spain, for instance, because they are too different. And this is if you start doing this, then it's, it's a totalitarian state. And this is what they want. They want the big corporations to be in charge and the governments not actually, they're just the puppets. And this is, you know, the, the, the deep state that is what these corporations are, the Rothschilds, you know, you know it all. So this is what they want for Europe. And this is, is very bad and dangerous. And the citizens of Europe will be yeah, thrown back, I think many years back in, in, in the past because 
the, the digital revolution is what they want, but it's 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 actually very terrible. And you at least should keep your sovereignty in a country. You should make your rules for your own people, and you can have trade rules with other countries. That's fine. Then you have a block, but not what is happening now. That's too bad. And that's why I think the deal last week with Saudi Arabia and Iran was such a big, huge deal. And the fact that China brokered that and that right afterwards he's in Russia. We'll see what happens. So, Sonia, as usual, great conversation. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you, too, Lee. Have a nice evening, okay. a nice afternoon okay. there. Bye. Okay. You have a nice night. Bye, Sonia. Bye. Let's take a short break. When we come back, 